So we've talked a lot about incentives and trade-offs and choices and what time is it? Uh, one sixteen. Um, so uh, how are we going to deal with these trade-offs? Right? We have this idea of trade-offs. We have this idea from the incentive principle that if you want people to sort of shift towards one decision, you should make that decision more attractive, raise the benefits, lower the costs. These are different ways that we can do it. Uh, but how can we deal with these trade-offs? Uh, well, well, we can think about something called the cost-benefit principle. Again, this is not going to be rocket science. Cost-benefit principle says that an action should be taken only if the benefits of taking that decision exceed the extra costs. N nothing super complex there. You do the thing for which the benefits exceed the costs. Pretty straightforward. Now, in economics, we think of costs and benefits as sort of being two sides of the same coin. Uh, it's, you can't really think about one without thinking about the other as well, right? If you, you know, uh, and but people, people try all the time, right? You, you see this a lot in political discussions uh, where, you know, if, some, if, if, if uh, somebody says that a policy is a really good idea, they'll talk about all the benefits of it and not talk about the costs that are associated with it. And if they think it's a really bad idea, they'll talk about all the costs that are associated with it without talking about any of the benefits, right? Those are both pretty useless positions to take. Uh, because it does not tell you whether the thing is a good idea. It just tells you whether it has benefits and has costs, which of course it does. Most things do. Um, but if you want to think about whether it's a good idea or not, you need to compare the benefits to the costs to figure out if the benefits are better than the costs. So let's work through an example. Uh, you know, uh, uh, thinking about how we can take costs and benefits into into account when making some sort of trade off. We're, we're going to try to uh, try to imagine how people could have been making particular choices. So let's say you have a lawn. Uh, you happen to have a house with a lawn uh, and you want to mow it. Should you mow your lawn or should you have someone else mow your lawn? Uh, you need to consider both the costs and the benefits of both of these decisions. What are the benefits and costs? Well, if you pay somebody to mow your lawn, then the benefit is your lawn gets mowed. Uh, the cons are that you have to pay them money uh, in order to do that. So whatever else you would have bought with that money, you, you can no longer buy. Mow your own lawn. Uh, the benefit is your lawn, again, gets mowed. Uh, the cons, uh, the costs. You have to spend time mowing your lawn. Uh, you have to have a lawn mower. It's going to take up space in your garage or wherever else you have to store it. Uh, and so that's it. So now we have benefits and costs of both of our alternatives. And if we want to think about whether one is a better idea than the other, we need to compare them, right? So we got to ask for the cost-benefit principle. Is having a mowed lawn worth the cost of doing it or the cost of doing it yourself? Uh, is having a mowed lawn worth the cost of paying someone else to do it? And then if they're both good ideas, which one of them is a lesser problem? All right, so let's sort of map this out a little bit, okay? So let's say we got, uh, we got mow your own lawn, uh, mow own lawn, great. And then we have pay someone. We got benefits, we got costs. So the benefits in both cases are the lawn is mowed. Here we got lawn is mowed. Costs. There it is, time and garage space. Over here, we got money. All right. So first thing we might try to do is to, is to analyze these in isolation. You can say, okay, is it a good idea to mow your own lawn? Well, for that, the benefit cost principle would say, well, compare the benefits to the cost. Well, okay, well, we get our lawn mowed, uh, but it takes us time and we have to take up space in our garage. Let's say that we decide that that is a worthwhile thing, right? That we'd rather mow our own lawn than not mow our lawn at all, right? So the, the getting the lawn mowed is better than the um, time and garage space that takes up. What if we pay somebody? Let's say that we decide that that is also worth it, that getting our lawn mowed is worth more than the 20 bucks it costs to have somebody to come by and mow it. I don't know how much it costs. Um, so great. So we've decided that both mowing your own lawn and paying somebody to do it are worthwhile endeavors, except that that still doesn't answer our question, does it? Because it doesn't tell us which one of the two to do. That's because we haven't fully explored all the cost benefit principle yet, which is to say that we can't just pick a option for which the benefits exceed the costs. We want the option for which the benefits most exceed the costs. Right, if the if it exceeds the extra cost, so we don't just compare uh, mowing your own lawn to nothing. We compare it to our other alternatives. Should we mow our own lawn or should we pay someone else to do it? Right. So if we compare these two things. Well, the benefits are the same, uh, but the costs are different. So we would want to go with whatever whichever one has the lower costs. Right. 
Instead, the principal says, if the costs go down, you're going to want to be more likely to do that option. So which do you care less about? The money that you have to give up to pay the lawnmower person uh, or the time and garage space that you have to give up to do it yourself? Whichever one of those is a lesser burden on you, you're probably going to go with that one, right? And that's what the cost benefit principle is having us do, right? It's having us compare the benefits of the costs and seeing which one gives the best, which option gives the best benefits compared to costs. All right, so that's a pretty straightforward example. Pretty simple, seems almost worthless to explore. But we can use this to explain some seemingly odd behavior. And this is sort of what we're getting into when I'm talking about like, how do we, we explain the world, right? So uh, one thing you might've noticed in general in the world is that uh, people make the same choice differently based on what context it's in, right? Uh, that you know, one choice one, somewhere may, may, might not make sense as, as might not make not yeah one choice in a certain situation might not make any sense uh, in a different situation, and that policies change right. Certain things are outlawed in certain countries and not in others. Uh, you know, certain things are subsidized in certain countries and not in others, or counties or states or whatever. So how do we make these choices? Well, you know, you want to think about as an incentive would, as an economist would say, how are the incentives different, right? If something is banned in one country and not the other. Well, then the incentives for whoever's doing the banning are probably different in one country versus the other. How can we explore that? So let's ask this question about seatbelts. Why are seatbelts required for young children in cars uh, and not even seatbelts, car seats, but in airplanes, a young child can sit in their parents' lap, right? That is something that we, and, and that's not, did not come from the sky. We made that decision. We, somebody made a decision that that's what the policy was going to be. That if you are in a car, you have to have a child under the age of, uh, under the under for a lot of ages, uh, up to a certain weight, I guess it is, in their own car seat, right? You have to be in a car seat. But an airplane, you don't need a car seat. Uh, you can have the kids sit in your lap up to age of two, right? So uh, why is this? Why? So there's, there's a decision being made about whether kids have to have their own car seats, but it's been made differently in two different situations. And so to explain why this is, we want to think about how the, what are the incentives that are being faced in these two different situations and why are they different? Um, yeah. Uh, so we're going to think about what the costs and benefits are in these two different scenarios. Um, oh, okay. So let's do that. All right. So what we're going to have here, we're going to have, uh, over here, we're going to have plane. Oops, give me a pen. And we're going to have car. So we have two different scenarios that we're in here. And we have a uh, car seat versus being in a parent's lap. And we have car seat versus being in a parent's lap. Okay. And then each of these options here has benefits and costs. All right. So can anybody tell me? Uh, actually, that might be not getting enough room. Let's start with benefits. Can anybody tell me, what would be some benefits of having a kid sit in a car seat as opposed to on their parents' lap in a plane? Maybe the benefit of comfort for um, the parent, like not having to hold the kid. Great, comfort. All right, what else? Safety. If there's extreme turbulence, the child will be safe in a car seat. Great. All right, what else? As a ticket price? Mm. Yeah, so that's actually going to go in the uh, the cost section. Okay. But yeah, that, I mean, that's definitely relevant, right? So we got ticket price, right? You got to buy, buy a kid their own ticket if they're going to sit in their own seat. Anything else? The likelihood of an accident. Likely, so we got like, yeah, so that's going to go into safety. Yep. All right, cool. That's good. Now we could ask the same question for lap, but actually we don't need to, right? We actually don't need to ask the question for lap because all these things that we just said are in comparison to being in the lap, right? So uh, what's a benefit of being in the lap? Well, you don't have to pay the ticket price. No ticket. What's the cost of being in the lap? Well, less comfort, less 
safety, right? When we're comparing two alternatives, right? The benefits of one are just the costs of the other, right? One of them is better than the other at certain things. And that's, that's how you compare them, right? So uh, the fact that the car seats are more comfortable than being in the lap means that being in the lap is less comfortable than being in the car seat. So we actually don't even need to, to do both columns here. We can just do one uh, and then understand that the sort of, they sort of swap uh, positions for the other one. Does that make sense? Okay, so uh, let's do the same question for uh, being in the car. In the car. So if we're in a car, what are the benefits of being in a car seat as opposed to in the parent's lap? Assuming we have a parent who is uh, not driving. I would say safety and comfort again. Yeah, comfort, safety. All right, how about costs? Cost of the car seat. Yeah, we gotta buy a car seat. Anything else? And then similar to over here, it takes up the seat. Okay, great. Okay, so we now have our incentives, right? So whoever was making a decision about whether kids need to be in their own seat in a plane was thinking about incentives like these. And whoever was thinking about whether kids need to be in their own seat in a car was thinking about incentives like these over here, right? And so we can think about how they might've made this, their decision by asking, well, do the benefits exceed the costs? Uh, and so for on the plane side, they thought, okay, well, you get more comfort and safety by being in your own seat, uh, but uh, it costs, a lot more to put that kid up in the uh, in, give the kid their own seat, takes up a seat. And in the car, you'll you get more comfort and safety by being in their own seat. Um, but also it uh, you know costs something to get the car seat and have it take up a seat. So you know we compare those benefits and we realize we just listed the exact same things uh, more or less on both sides. Okay, so that doesn't actually answer things quite yet until we realize that these things are very differently sized in these two different scenarios, right? So which is more likely, a car crash or a plane crash? Car crash for sure. Car crash is way more likely than plane crash, right? So the safety issue is going to come up a lot more often over here on the car side, right? That's really big. The safety issue is going to be really big because it's a lot more common to get into a car crash than it is to get into a plane crash, right? How about ticket price? Is it more expensive to get another seat on a plane or to uh, give up a seat in your car? The plane? Probably the plane, right? So it's several hundred dollars to get another ticket on a plane, right? Um, whereas the car seat, you know, how much does it cost to give, for give up one seat uh, on, one, on, a, on a trip, right? So that's probably going to be bigger over there. So comparing these two situations where we listed, I mean, qualitatively, the same things more or less on the benefits and cost side, by noticing that the safety benefit is a lot higher uh, on the car side, whereas the costs are a lot higher on the plane side, sort of gives us a clue as to why somebody might have chosen to say that, hey, you have to have a car seat in a car for a kid, but you don't have to do that on a plane, right? By comparing how the incentives are different in the two different scenarios, we can understand why the choice was made differently in these two different scenarios. Any questions about that? I know it's a little gruesome, but would you factor in also like survivability or is it really more just cost? I mean, you could, I mean, that, that might come into play with the safety thing, right? So if you think that a car seat wouldn't make a difference in a plane, in a plane crash, then I guess that, that might uh, factor in as well. Um, but yeah, that is a little grisly, huh? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So the difference comparing the costs and benefits in the two scenarios explains why we're going to be likely to choose seat belts in one situation and or, uh, car seats in one situation and no car seats uh, in the other. And these are the kinds of decisions that get in, taken into account when, I mean, not just designing policy in these cases, these are policies that were designed, but also making individual choices, right? Uh, you know, so you, you can ask why one person buys something and the other person doesn't. Well, probably the incentives that they face are different in those two different scenarios, right? Um, and that's the kind of thing that you can ask yourself. Um, by the way, this logic that we just walked through uh, is a great way to think about how to explain the world, right? We talked already about how you can walk around the world asking why things are the way that they are, and then trying to explain them using incentives. This is a great example of how you can do that. 
which by the way, is going to be the economic naturalist assignment uh, that you're going to have to do twice. Uh, so, you know, be looking on, be on the lookout for good situations like this, where you can explain why things are the way that they are using incentives, because uh, then you can use that uh, for your paper.